Hello everyone and welcome. I'm going to replace the front shock absorbers on my Mark II Focus. For several months I've been noticing that there was a front knocking noise. I couldn't uh, exactly pinpoint where it was coming from because I've checked all the bushes, all linkages, the lower wishbones, ball joints, nothing. There was no play on any of those suspension components. So my attention will go towards either the top shock mounts or the shock absorbers themselves. Since I had no history for the car since before I bought it, I don't know when, were, when was the last time where the shock absorbers were uh, replaced. So it could, we, could well be that they are completely worn as well as the top mounts. However, the car has passed the MOT in the last few weeks and there was no indications of any wear on the shock absorbers. I do the usual bump test and I could notice any issues, but it could well be that the suspension itself could be masking uh, other problems and therefore the only way when they manifest themselves is going through potholes and then the knocking noise does simply uh, come through. Now uh, let's have a look on to how to replace the front shock absorbers on my car. When you do work on your car always observe safety first. Make sure that uh, the wheels are choked, the handbrake is on, the car is lifted, secured on axle stands, as you can see over there, the wheels under the car, but keep the trolley jack near you because you're definitely going to need it. Now I'm going to start with the driver's side and you can see in here there are no signs of wear apparently unless uh, there is some uh, misting oil which normally indicates that the uh, shock absorber is completely gone but I've tested also all these components there is no, no play on any of them in here so I have a feeling that these might still be the original ones and therefore uh, become worn. Uh, the car has 130,000 miles, so I wouldn't be surprised that these have already gone. Uh, I'm going to do some preparation work, so I'm going to clean and wire brush every single nut and also wire brush the collar here and uh, um, spray it with some penetrating fluid. You just uh, remove this bracket here, detach uh, the uh, ABS sensor and also remove uh, some uh, trim from uh, the engine bay. Then, under the bonnet, you have to remove the plastic tray, which is under the uh, wiper arm trim. Uh, there's no need to remove the wiper arm, so just remove these uh, five or six clips that hold this piece of trim in place. Some will jump out into the engine bay, but no worries, you will be able to catch them. Then, on either side, there is a T30 Torx screw, which you will have to remove. Now grab the number 13 socket and you can undo about halfway the three bolts that secure the top suspension strut. Before you release the suspension strut you have to widen this gap. So in order to widen this clamp you just use a chisel and you hammer it down with a block hammer and it will prise uh, the collar open 
and it will make the release of the suspension, suspension strut much easier. Then you uh, hammer down the steering knuckle and it will help to release the suspension strut completely. Keep the chisel in place so that uh, the gap always stays open and it will make it easier for you to insert the strut at later stage. Now you can undo the remaining thread of all three screws that hold the top suspension mount and then you can release the full strut. But uh, one thing is fundamental, keep always this away from uh, your uh, body and most importantly your face. Use very good quality spin compressors and make sure that they are absolutely parallel uh, to each other. Exact opposite ends at 180 degrees and if they move, just whack with a little bit of the hammer in order to make sure that remain exactly on the opposite sides. And never do only one side all at the time, keep alternating so that the tension is even. Um, of course, um, you can never be too careful with spring compressors, but if you have a chance to use a hydraulic one, please use it. Or even if you have a chance to use a, um, a professional, uh, well, you can use it too. And of course, make sure that you keep your fingers away from it because sometimes if they are not properly uh, uh, set up, they can easily uh, snap and then uh, clip your fingers uh, in between. Then using a um, angled uh, spanner number 18 and then a number six Allen key, um, you then crack open the uh, shaft nut. But, um, Beware, because if this is not an original Ford, it might have a slightly different measure, measurements. So, but the principle is still the same. Uh, again, away from your face, but this should be already the safe point of compression because um, the, uh, there's already a gap between uh, the top of the uh, spring and the mount, so it should be safe to remove. Of course, these usually come up, but it doesn't matter because I'm not going to reuse them. I can safely remove the spring. So this is the bottom of the suspension mount. It includes the plastic collar that goes on the top of the um, shock absorber. And it's actually in very good condition, the mount, so I'm going to use it. I'm just gonna have to extract it from the mount. Just give this a bit of a clean. Now let's see the condition of the shock absorber. Oops. No resistance whatsoever. Oh well, no wonder this was completely shot. Uh, yeah, still the original FOMOCO ones. Yeah. This can go to the bin and I can get an, my new shock absorber. So the new top mounts are consisted of two parts. The top one, and here it is, the part number is from Saks and I got it from Eurocar Parts. So this is the top half. The bottom half is from SKF. I also got it a couple of years ago from Eurocar Parts and here it is the uh, part number. That's where it contains the actual bearing and you just click the two parts together uh, like so they just basically click into place. Now I've put back in the older top uh, bush 
click firmly into place and make sure that is properly inserted. Now these shock absorbers are from Starline. It's a brand that I've used on other previous uh, suspension components. Quite happy with them. They have been very good so far. So I thought I'll give a try to the shock absorbers. They cost uh, uh, just over hundred pounds on Eurocar parts. And I will put the part numbers on the screen and also on the video description. Um, these were all clamped and I'm going to remove this plastic collar uh, from here and use the actual original um, Ford one. Uh, I thought there was no it is still in good shape. I gave this a little bit of a clean with some degreaser just to make it look a little bit better. It will go in here all the way to the bottom. Now you insert the spring, make sure that the end of the spring uh, touches this end here and then you insert the new top mount and make sure that the top mount matches with the curve of the actual spring itself Okay, so you can see in here, it's actually matching. Okay. Now you can see that it's actually matching. It's now time to tighten up. Right, it's much more secure now. and tighten this to 55 Newton meters. Once you remove the spring compressors, you can then stretch the um, uh, suspension boot and make sure it clicks at the bottom of the top mount uh, so that it prevents the ingress of dirt. Right, I gave this a bit of a clean just to make it look better. To be honest, when it comes to a new shock absorber, everything else just <laughs> looks a little bit too old but uh, I'm not sure how long these springs will last so they are quite corroded in here but anyway I think it should be all right when you put the shock absorber back in make sure that these ridges go towards the engine and then what I'll just do I'll just try and um, uh, uh, screw the uh, put the screws uh, from at the top, but just leave it hanging for a bit. Obviously, do not forget to put some thread locker on uh, the screws themselves because they are definitely needed. Inside the collar, I have a wire brush to remove some of the loose rust and put also some penetrating fluid uh, in order to uh, uh, make it easier to um, insert. But of course, do not forget that this guide pin in here will go through this gap. So I make, have to make sure that this will line up and therefore I'll keep the chisel in here to keep the gap open. With the help of the trolley jack, you push it up and make the necessary adjustments while you push the knuckle hub. Sometimes the chisel can drop, so you can insert it uh, from underneath to keep the gap open and then keep pushing the trolley jack up until the strut is fully inserted. Sometimes uh, it can take a few tries. You have to drop it and then insert again Make sure it is properly lined up and then after a final push it will go firmly into place. There 
you go it's nice and sitting in now that this is all in place you just put a little bit of thread lock on the bolt and tighten it to 55 uh, i mean 110 newton meters Then you fully tighten the screws at the top with a torque wrench and 30 newton meters of torque. I would like to point out that when you replace the steering or suspension components, they both must be replaced in pairs. Just because one component is faulty and the other one isn't faulty, it means that the other good component will also become faulty soon so it's always worth to replace all these components in pairs also when you do any steering or suspension work it is worth recommended to do a steering wheel alignment because it could well be that the uh, the suspension geometry is not really correct with the faulty components and then with uh, the wrong uh, wheel alignment it won't get any better so it's advisable to do a steering wheel alignment after any suspension work. Well, it's all done now, and I've also taken the car for a spin. It does feel better to drive. Um, it's not really the placebo effect, but it's also the fact that the uh, there's no more knocks on the suspension and also seems to grip the road a little bit better. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on next video. Take care.